Hello viewers and listeners, welcome to Tittle Tattle with Asansua. This is part two of the conversation with Professor Mrs. Cynthia Amini Dampa on Did You Know This? Please stay tuned. Listening to you, I have no doubt that you believe in status quo. So someone will be like, why should I go for a travel grant? I want a big grant to do research. But you went for that and then we gave the stepping stone to a bigger grant. It's always a process. You have to start from somewhere. And I'm one person who likes to apply for things. I have applied for so many things. Some I win, some I don't win. But if I see it and I fall within the eligibility criteria, I'll try. I may win or not. Because um, to go and do my PhD, I went by applying for the Ghana Trust Fund, Get Fund Scholarship. And um, yes, that was it. I also applied for other conferences whilst even a PhD student. All right. So now you have the. How did you feel when you, you won? I was very excited. Uh, that was a good opportunity because I, I always wanted to set up my research. Coming back, having learned so much, and coming back to settle, um, I should be able to continue some of the good things that I, I studied. So fortunately, now I have uh, my own research group with my postgraduate students and. We have a website, cynthiadamquagroup.org, uh, <laughs> okay. and so our research articles and stuff are online there. Yes. And equipment? And equipment, yes, some expensive equipment that I, I couldn't have without the grant. Now I have one or two, and hopefully we'll apply for other grants. Do you like to mention them? Maybe someone wants to collaborate based on the equipment you have? Oh, so I have a reagent dispenser. Uh, for plating, so most of the work we do, we, it's in vitro assays in 96 work plates, and uh, we are able to dispense the agar using the dispenser. So it's sort of uh, automated because our experiments should be high throughput. We have a lot of extracts and compounds that we want to test for activity. Uh -huh. So if we have a library of compounds, we should be able to do so many at a time and get out the bioactive ones. So it's made the work um, faster, if I should say. Yeah. Any other? We want to, well, we haven't acquired a fluorimeter <coughs> yet. That is uh, something I hope to get for other experiments that we perform. But now we have an autoclave, we have a PCR machine, uh, etc. So, and we've been able to get a few computers, printers, and others. So we are all set and we are in business. <laughs> Would you say that you've accomplished all that uh, you set out to be as far as the award is concerned? Um, the, the, the project is still running, and I report quarterly, the financial report and the research report. So I'm now in the last quarter, the fourth quarter. But we are on time, and uh, the work is ongoing. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I go on with uh, any leadership. Um, or let me ask first, uh, any additional awards apart from uh, yes, the yes. Um, So whilst I was a PhD student, I applied for the Bill and Melinda Gates Travel Fund to be able to present my research. And, uh, and I won it, so I had the opportunity to go um, to San Diego in California to present my research, which was all paid for. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, so business. <laughs> business class, uh, ready, uh, moving car, hotel, everything. Paid, the cafe treatment. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> paid for good luxury hotel, and uh, I went to present my research, and it was a good experience. I also, in 2019, won the KNUSC Research from the CREF, the SEED grant. I applied for two, and also the interdisciplinary grant, and I won both. Uh, it was a one-year project. I finished that, and I was able to publish from the findings of that work. Yes. Uh, 
a few others, yes. But all I want to say is you have to start small and then you grow it. So it's because I'm gaining more experience in grant writing. That is why I'm getting the bigger ones. I haven't reached it, but yes. Yeah. You're almost there. <laughs> Hopefully, yes. Along the way in your journey, have you picked up any leadership positions? Um, yes. Yes, so I'm currently the country ambassador for the American Society for Microbiology. Okay. What uh, does it mean to be the country ambassador? So I coordinate all the activities, open up new branches, uh, students groups in, in the various universities, and it's not just our microbiology, all the um, life science or biological sciences. And, um, some of the students have applied for the conference this year and the abstracts have been accepted and all that. So I'm just encouraging them and opening the doors for them gradually. So it's all part of the mentoring. And I've been the vice uh, chairperson for Ashanti Region, the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. And um, yes, a few others. Um, but KNUST <laughs> alumni, a global secretary for KNUST alumni, and now a uh, Council of Convocation member. <laughs> so, uh, yes, gradually. Um, How have these positions shaped your perception about life and um, work? I think for me, life is about service service to community and the ability to help others because your blessings come from doing that and you also gain experience by serving others so I mean for me that is it yeah. have you enjoyed any privileges as a pharmacist as a woman in STEM as a woman occupying all these leadership have you really enjoyed certain uh, perks that you like, oh, this one is special because of what I do? Uh, not quite, but I think that uh, for me, I always work for the positions. But, well, because everybody sees what you do, it's like, oh, you deserve it. That alone makes me happy. I mean, oh, because they see what you do. Um, they praise you and think that it is well deserved. It's based on merit. Um, yes, but I mean, um, I'm sure yes, one or two privileges will come your way or doors open uh, based on your work. Any challenges apart from gathering family and work? Any challenges along the way, your path so far? that you will always remember. <laughs> <laughs> as I said, the initial stages were not too smooth as in, but as you go along, you get used to the job and how demanding it is. You must be on your toes every time. And uh, yes, but it gets better with time. Your PhD experience? Oh, that. I think a bit of discrimination and that, <laughs> that is, it was only in the UK that I actually had to look at my skin and say, oh, I'm getting this because my skin color is black. <laughs> anyway, it was sad sometimes, but uh, I have a bit of a tough skin and uh, I, I just focus on my way because I, I look at the bigger picture. There was a reason why I was there and I had to achieve it and come back home. Yes, but you feel a bit of the discrimination and uh, people thinking you shouldn't know what you know or you think you don't know much, so uh, their eyes are always following what <laughs> you are doing, this is whether you are doing the right thing. And okay, but back home, I think as a woman, the only challenge I'll say is that we know we work in a male-dominated environment and uh, sometimes uh, I think the males are downplay your capabilities and uh, you have to work double or triple as a woman to, to be recognized. Uh, there's no doubt about that. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, has there been any 
Yes, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens. I mean, you would bring the idea, you would bring the idea, but as a woman in front of you, it's as if, oh, that's not good enough, or it's not. But at the end of the day, you will see them implementing or using it, or you, you, you achieve it, and everybody rallies around you. So, but it's all good. <laughs> Well, you take it with a smile. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I always take it with a wide smile. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you just have to learn to forgive people quickly yes. in our environment. Otherwise, you'll be very bitter. Yes. Yeah. Do you recall of any instance, or let me say, what is the happiest occasion or incident that you've ever experienced or encountered? I think finishing my PhD was a happy moment because I left my family, I left my kids, my husband back in Ghana just to go and get that and come back. And uh, the journey was tough, but to to finish and return home uh, was a joy because we know stories of people going and not coming back the PhD or things like that. And I always pray that I'll come back and be my parents have been safely, my family safely and all that. That alone in your mind plus the work was quite uh, daunting. But so I think it was a relief and a happy moment to be done. Are you visiting home often? I, I think I visited home twice and my family also visited just once a year. Yes. That's Christmas. <laughs> Any hobbies? Oh yes, um, I like baking. <laughs> Maybe I took that from my mom. Yes, I, I like baking. I and love I'm going to taste your cookies and, and banana cake. Okay. So <laughs> Maybe my next birthday. Yes, that a promise. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to listen to music a lot and dance sometimes. Yes. And then you said you always wanted to sing in the choir. <laughs> Ah, yes, I never found time for that after primary school. But but primary school you, you I was part of the choir. Okay. Yes. I think that's where the foundation is set. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so uh, yeah, those are things I do. I, I read when I find time to read. But I, I don't find a lot of time to read novels as I would have loved, but um, a few books here and there once in a while. Thank you for staying. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.